Hello, everyone. This is Coach Kathy, and I'm here at Hybrid Fitness, and I have a treat for you today. We have a very special guest. This is Leanne D'Onofrio, and she is a physical therapist at Penn Bay Medical Center. So Leanne has a specialty. She is going to talk to us today about pelvic floor issues. So that... And Leanne has put in a lot of time and has worked with a lot of patients, especially our patients here at the gym. So we have a lot of people that have gone to her for pelvic floor issues. It's something that we hear a lot in all of our classes. Almost every class that I coach, actually, um, I have someone come up and, and talk to me about a pelvic floor issue and how they can strengthen their pelvic floor um, so that they can function in daily life and that they can function here at the gym. So one of my very first questions is, most people don't even know that there is physical therapy for <laughs> pelvic floor. So can you tell us what is pelvic physical therapy? Um, pelvic floor rehab is what I call it, and it is basically what it says. It mm -hmm. is strengthening the muscles of the pelvis, mm -hmm. but they're basically internal. However, there are three layers of pelvic floor muscles, mm -hmm. and you need to strengthen all of them. The support that they provide mm -hmm. allows you to have um, better strength with your bladder, mm -hmm. better efficiency with your bowels, mm -hmm. help to prevent prolapsing, which is organs dropping and possibly falling out, mm -hmm. um, and just general pelvic health issues. A lot of people have a lot of pelvic pain that they never even realized they had, oh. um, and that can give a lot of bad issues. Um, mm -hmm you know, postpartum or mm -hmm. intimacy. Um, and that is tends to be my favorite thing is pain, but I love mm -hmm. to treat everything. Okay, now she's scaring me because she says her favorite thing is pain. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I, I don't think most people are even aware that there's three layers of muscle there. So that's a good place to start. Um, so what what kind of training did you have to do? I know obviously you went through physical therapy yes. school and then what did you have to do in addition to that to be a pelvic floor specialist? There are um, various agencies I would say um, that um, specifically train in pelvic floor rehabilitation. I was mm -hmm. trained by Herman and Wallace Pelvic Floor Institute. Mm -hmm. um, I feel very confident and comfortable with them Day one, they told me I could go out and practice and essentially assess the pelvic floor, um, mm -hmm. which can only be assessed vaginally or rectally. So, Oh, okay. okay. So it is a very intimate process. Very to intimate process. come and see you. Okay. Yes. So when is it time for people to come and seek a specialist like yourself? W when do they finally say, okay, I, something is wrong, I, I need to do this? Is it usually from their primary care physician or do they try and reach you directly? How, do, how does that work? Um, I always need a doctor's referral okay. or you know, a, a nurse practitioner or a certified nurse midwife, anyone that can provide a prescription. Okay. So that I definitely always need that. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, I have patients that will get that referral and call me and say, I want to speak with you before I come there. I just want a little heads up what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. have all the doctors and nurses, nurse practitioners, midwives, um, knowing that they need to prep their patients to know that part of what I do is a very intimate evaluation mm -hmm. um, because they come in and sometimes there are deer in the headlights. Oh, <laughs> Eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't realize that yeah. this is what it entails. <laughs> They're like, what, what are you going to do to <laughs> me? Right. <laughs> exactly. It's funny because I've had a few people come in and say, well, I brought sneakers because I wasn't sure what we were going to do. And I'm like, you're not going to need sneakers <laughs> for what I need to do. <laughs> but um, I mean, most people that come to physical therapy would need maybe to put shorts on, on or, or maybe sneakers course, or something. But this this is a different animal altogether. Different so, animal altogether. So what can they expect on that first visit? Like how, how long is the visit? Um, and then from after that first visit, how often do they need to come back to see you? Okay. Great questions. My first um, visit is my initial evaluation. 
I block out 90 minutes of time for mm -hmm. this. It is mm -hmm. extensive depending on what the issue is. A lot of people that come for incontinence issues or which means bladder leakage, fecal leakage, um, things like mm -hmm. that, frequency, urinary frequency, um, mm -hmm. constipation, they tend to be longer because I have to give them a lot of training in urinary facts, bladder facts, mm -hmm. um, your, mm -hmm. um, fecal um, incontinence facts, things along that line. Uh -huh. So it tends to be a longer visit than if someone comes in and says to me, you know, I have pain with intercourse. Mm -hmm. And not that that's not, that tends to be more extensive, mm -hmm. but the evaluation is not as long. But most of my evals go beyond 90 minutes, if I have to say that honestly. Oh, gosh. <laughs> because okay. once, once I get patients into my office mm -hmm. and they really truly realize that they have these issues and they can talk with somebody about it, mm -hmm. they just open up. Yeah, the floodgate opens and the then they have opens. a million questions yep. and, and what can they do to fix it? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh Definitely. my. Okay. So then, so after that initial visit, do you see them once a week or twice a week or how does that? Usually come? I see my patients once a week. Okay. Um, it's a, about a 45 minute appointment, give or take. Okay. A little bit. Okay. Um, and I always tell patients that, that have um, Pen Bay for their primaries mm -hmm. and follow my chart that right now, because of the COVID issues, mm -hmm. um, my chart will say they're going to be there for 60 minutes, but I have to do extensive cleanup post mm -hmm. my treatments. Mm -hmm. So I usually see them roughly 45 minutes. Right. Okay. Um, and I usually okay. schedule, most patients I give a six visit start. Okay. So um, when they come in, I usually ask them, you know, that we're going to set up six visits. Depending on what I find, mm -hmm. it may be an eight, eight visit, but that, that we go by their insurances, obviously, because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, we don't want them to pay a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And um, so we set up accordingly. But mm -hmm. if I set up six visits and they don't need that many, then we're done when they're done. If they okay. need more than that, we add as insurance and they agree to. Okay, okay. So does the number of visits, does that also, um, does that also vary according to how much homework they do at home? Because I think you give them things that they can do between visits Absolutely. with you. Absolutely. Okay. A, a lot of it is homework um, that they have to be dedicated to because, you know, it's things that they need to work on and utilize and strengthen, just mm -hmm. like when they work with you guys here. Mm -hmm. Just at the gym. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, and... It, for what happens with that is they, what I tell them, you're living with these issues 24 seven. It's very hard for you to see any progress or changes. But mm -hmm. when I see them once a week, mm -hmm. I know if they've done their homework. You do? I know. You can tell. I can tell. Oh, wow, I, okay. I can see changes. Okay. Um, they'll come in and say to me, you know, I was, I was peeing, yeah. for lack of better words, <laughs> right. every half an hour. Well, now I can make it every hour. Wow. So okay. I, it's things that I can see, mm -hmm. and which is another reason why that once a week is a good time yeah. frame. Okay. Yeah. It's like a good marker between. Yeah. Yes. So most of us, we've, we've heard the words um, pelvic floor, and we think of Kegel exercises. Can you tell me what those are and, and how beneficial or not beneficial are they, depending on the situation? Kegel exercises are of the utmost benefit in most cases. Okay. Okay. And let me further explain that because mm -hmm. some people's pelvic floors are tight. Mm -hmm. So if they're already tight, then I wouldn't want to start them with Kegel exercises because number one, the, the muscles are not lengthening sufficiently to produce a sufficient contraction. Okay. 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 Yep. And so I need to lengthen those muscles and help them to do that first, relax mm -hmm. their pelvic floor, understand mm -hmm. what relaxation is. Mm -hmm. um, but most, most of my patients, even those that have a very tight pelvic floor and we get them relaxed, mm -hmm. I do teach them Kegels. Mm -hmm. I will um, um, modify it maybe or, you know, 
um, whatever I need to do to help that patient so that they mm -hmm. can stay strong. But if they can't keep that pelvic floor lengthened, mm -hmm. then I don't want to keep doing something that's not going to help that. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so what are the other exercises? Do you, do you have like, like your top three, say, that you would give someone that, that came in that needed to strengthen their pelvic floor? Um, above and beyond Kegels, I teach what's called quick flicks. That's mm -hmm. also a part of pelvic floor exercises. Mm -hmm. um, it's what it says. It's just quickly contracting and relaxing your pelvic floor muscles. Okay. 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 And which I should probably further say that the third pelvic floor layer, which yeah. let me, how about if I just yeah, show you absolutely. that absolutely. Yeah. Looks, if you look in here, mm -hmm. that is our third layer of pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. It looks mm -hmm. like a bowl. A lot of people call that the Kegel layer. Mm -hmm. um, most of us call it the pelvic floor. Some mm -hmm. people even call it the pelvic diaphragm mm -hmm. because it, we want that to mirror our actual diaphragm on the top. Okay. That completes our core mm -hmm. stability and strength. Mm -hmm. So core, a lot of people think it's just belly, but mm -hmm. it's not. It's your diaphragm on the top, mm -hmm. belly muscles in the front, mm -hmm. your back muscles in the back, and this pelvic floor in the bottom. Okay. So we want to keep those all strengthened. Mm -hmm. So above and beyond um, that, well, the key, uh, so the third layer mm -hmm. functions like a drawstring bag. That's what I tell patients. So oh. if you think of it tightening up and in, mm -hmm. that's how you do it. No one should ever know you're doing a Kegel. Okay, They're, right. Okay, you okay. shouldn't be popping up on your butt. You shouldn't be closing your legs. So right. many people will say to me, I had to cross my legs to get to the toilet. Mm, it doesn't help. It doesn't lot. really do much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or they'll do a crunch. Well, a crunch doesn't work. You want to mm -hmm. use a lower belly muscle to help. And I okay. call that the ceiling to the pelvic floor. Okay. But if you think of just d drawing up and in, mm -hmm. and that was a... Um, description that one of my patients gave to me and I thought how how simple is that for people yeah. to understand yeah I've heard um the elevator like you start at the bottom, bottom and you and, and you bring the elevator up yep so I have heard that yeah, yeah. Okay. and I do reference that too if that makes it easier because again that's in including mm -hmm. all three of those layers mm -hmm. okay. um so um I forgot what you asked me <laughs> I had asked you. Um, <laughs> oh gosh! I'm sorry, I got yeah, in a ramble. Okay. <laughs> uh, what are some of the exercises oh, that you right. that you give to people? So again? above and beyond those, um, mm -hmm. I love pelvic tilts. Okay. Okay. Um, I love bridges with pelvic tilts. Okay. And then bridges with pelvic tilts with hip adduction or hip abduction. Oh. They're basic, simple exercises that most patients can do. So mm -hmm. whether my patient is 80 or 18, mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. can do it okay. um, usually comfortably. Mm -hmm. um, if they have back issues, it will also help strengthen their backs as well. Okay. But it becomes a very important adjunct to the pelvic floor exercises themselves. Okay, okay. And it also would... Um Strengthen their glutes as well, all those bridges and things. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, so it's, it's getting everything. It's Hamstrings, it'll, it'll do it, everything. It, it does everything, <laughs> yes. Um, are there things that they should not do? Well, what I tell patients is um, squatting puts our pelvic floor at rest. Okay. Okay, so if you can learn to do a Kegel while you're squatting, that's good, but okay. you don't want to consistently squat Okay. Because you're putting that pelvic floor at rest. And if you think about squatting, a lot of times mm -hmm. everything kind of drops down a little bit. Mm -hmm. So again, you got to hold that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So until those muscles are, are strong enough to hold everything up, right. maybe there's a few folks I'm thinking of in my, it, that come to our gym that maybe shouldn't be doing squats, squats. right now. Yes. Um, is there something else that they could do instead of squats? Like if they're trying to strengthen quads and legs, like um, behinds, is there something else that you would recommend that they do? Or would you go right to glute bridges and things like that? Probably that. Okay. That's what I would do. Okay. Definitely. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Then um, I'm going to use that in my sessions then. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> That's good. Um, and... As far as um, lifting things, lifting heavy things, um, some people have told me that they have trouble with that, that they can't, can't lift something heavy um, without something happening that's embarrassing. Right. So um, would you, how, how would they do that if they shouldn't be squatting? 
Do they get somebody else to help them? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, I, you know, if it's something heavy, that's what I tell patients. You know, you always should have somebody else to help you just mm -hmm. for your own safety and everyone's yeah. safety. Mm -hmm. What I try to do is before my patients leave me, I try to make doing Kegels particularly mm -hmm. a part of functional activities of daily living. Okay. So I try to make sure that when they walk out my door and say, okay, thanks for all this, mm -hmm. they're able to do a Kegel when they sneeze, when they oh. cough, when they lift something up, when okay. they bend over, when okay. they get out of a chair. Most patients mm -hmm. will tell me that, oh my gosh, when I go to stand, yeah. I lose my bladder. Yes. Or parts of my bladder. Right. So they okay. need to know, and I do make them know mm -hmm. how to do a, a Kegel when they're going to okay. stand. That, that's excellent. That's excellent. Oh, my gosh. Okay. How much of these conditions are are genetic or age related like like how much of it is something that we can anticipate because mom and grandma you know also had these issues things like that and how much of it is um like lack of exercise or you know just the fact that it's weak and they're just not using it enough um what where do your patients kind of fall in that i i have to say i have some of all of them okay okay um <laughs> I don't ever truly remember in all of my training them saying that it's a genetic or a hereditary thing, mm -hmm. but I do see conditions where mom, sister, grandma have had a prolapse mm. okay. or something dropping, falling out. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, my mom always had a weak bladder, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the older we get, you know, our, mm -hmm. our tissues are not as do not have as much elasticity, they don't mm -hmm. function as mm -hmm. quickly or as readily, so of course age is a factor. Mm -hmm. um, general physical disabilities can obviously mm -hmm. have an effect on your pelvic floor and your bladder, your bowels, mm -hmm. all those things. Okay. Um, what I am trying to really work on now is um, it is mandatory in Europe that six weeks postpartum, every woman sees a pelvic floor physical therapist. Oh, that's phenomenal. Yes. Now, so I'm trying to get <laughs> our OBGYN community to follow suit with that mm -hmm. because it has to start there. Mm -hmm. You know, all these women mm -hmm. that have had babies, it changes their pelvic floor. They've, yeah. they've given birth to a human being through their pelvic floor, most right. of them, or they've had a, a cesarean mm -hmm. section, which has cut mm -hmm. through there mm -hmm. and has uh, had an effect on their pelvic floor as well. Right. So, you know, there, used, there was a time when everyone wanted a C-section because mm -hmm. th they wouldn't have these issues. No. They still have they those still issues. They still have issues. Okay. okay. All right. That's good to know because, yeah. yeah, I bet a lot of people don't know that. They think they're taking maybe possibly an easier route, which, which they later find out is not it's as not. easy. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, there is no um, better route as far as okay. giving birth. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the doctors do what they need to do in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, but trying to strengthen and get things functioning mm -hmm. more readily again functioning back to as normal as possible again mm -hmm. is you know where we need to start yeah. yeah but someone who who doesn't have these issues yet but has you know um you know mom sister grandma in the family or they are planning on having children can they come to see you before any of that or do they does there does there need to be like a reason why they no actually okay. you know uh, that's what, that's what we always say you know even those that come postpartum mm -hmm. it, it you know it's m muscle weakness it's mm -hmm. or muscle tightness mm -hmm. you know that's all it really needs to say okay and then someone could come and see you so yes. there could be a lot of preventative um ways to go about this yes okay all right um Depending on the diagnosis, what is the time frame that patients can expect to feel a difference? Is it, do they, do they feel different um, like right after that first visit, whether it's physical, emotional, kind of mental, um, I want to say calm, <laughs> relief maybe? Yes. Um, I was just going to so, say yeah. relief. I, I, I have to say that um, 
we were trained that true effects don't happen for at least six months. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I don't see patients for six months. I mean, unless I absolutely had to, the, mm -hmm. you know, there's certain cases. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I say most of my patients come back, first of all, mm -hmm. first one back and saying, mm -hmm. oh, what a relief, just to know, okay, mm -hmm. now I got some answers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. This is why this is happening. Mm -hmm. um, but. You know, I would say within the first month, they already feel more strength, more um, ability to control mm -hmm. bladder leakage, mm -hmm. have better mm -hmm. uh, success with their bowel movements. Okay. So I really find that happens within a month. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then over the years, do you have um, repeat patients? Do patients come back to you? Um, because does, does it weaken over time if they don't put in that daily um, exercise, Yes, I want to say? <laughs> yes. Um, honestly, uh, well, yes, I've had um, people come back. Mm -hmm. Some people just want to be rechecked. Some people feel they need a little tune-up. Some people okay. have gotten away from their program. Okay. And But I've had many patients that come and they're seeing me and they're making progress and they're feeling good and they mm -hmm. start to slack off yeah and they can already see oh, resurgence of does. leaking or things like that but that's a good thing because mm -hmm. that shows them that the exercises work mm -hmm. and that their mm -hmm. dedication is worth the time and effort yeah and i will say that when a pelvic floor is strengthened and you reach that maintenance phase mm -hmm you can get away with doing eight to 10 Kegels a day. That's it all. Oh, okay. 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 So it's so not it's a, not a big program. It's then. not a big once, program. Once you um, kind of address the initial issue, it's, it's yes. pretty easy after that. After okay. That, yes. All right. That's good to know. Cause a lot of people are like, Oh, I'm going to have to deal with this the rest of my life. Right. And, and yes and no. Um, it's, it's yes. fairly simple after it is. And, it, and so. the thing I tell patients in regards to that as well is mm -hmm. yes, you're going to have to do these the rest of your life mm -hmm. and no offense to you guys, but yeah. it's the easiest exercises you can do because you don't have to go mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. You don't have to change your clothes. <laughs> you don't need, you don't need equipment. Yeah. You can do it talking right now. Yeah. I can do a keel yeah. and you'll never and be never the know. wiser. <laughs> and um, so you can put mm -hmm. it in anywhere. Okay. And when I say eight to 10 repetitions a day, you can do that eight to 10 in a row. Mm. Or you can do every time you get out of a chair. If you do a Kegel, you're oh. certainly going to do eight of them or ten of them a day. A day, yeah, that's so true. So again, making it a part of their mm -hmm. everyday living mm -hmm. um, makes it much mm -hmm. more manageable. Okay. We have talked a lot about women. A lot of people associate um, weak pelvic floor with women um, for obvious reasons. But I know also that you have a percentage of your patients that are men. Yes. So um, why, why would they come to see you? Um, the reason most gentlemen come to see me are, first is incontinence mm -hmm. or um, frequency. Um, usually it's related to a prostate issue. So if you're having those issues and your doctor has not assessed that, I would strongly suggest if you're in that age frame, which can be mm -hmm. anywhere from 40 on, okay. that you would get that assessed and kind mm -hmm. of go from there. Mm -hmm. um, so mostly then, but I do have uh, my fair share of male patients that have um, pelvic pain as well. Um, okay. You know, it makes makes intimacy difficult for them. It, it just makes urination sometimes difficult and painful for them or a bowel movement as well okay. um and it's funny you said that too because mm -hmm. most um people think that men don't have a pelvic floor mm -hmm. <laughs> once you get past that penis everything in here is the same it's the same yeah, <laughs> yeah. so um yes mm -hmm. so it, it they do have a pelvic floor <laughs> okay okay all right that's good to know um what do you know what percentage of your of your patients are men versus women i would say you know i would definitely say 75 percent are women and 15 percent are men okay it, I, okay I'm, Pretty roughly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And I sense. think too, men men tend to be even more or less accepting that they have these issues or that they can talk about it. Mm, um, I've true. had a few gentlemen that actually belong to a post prostatectomy support group, and I think that that's wonderful. Wow, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, there's definitely one in Belfast. 
and I'm not sure of the name or the people, but I'm sure if you looked it up, mm-hmm. they they open mm-hmm. arms for people, yeah. gentlemen, to come okay. and and discuss the issues and yeah. issues that they're having. Okay. And and definitely, I you know I love when my prostatectomy people mm-hmm. see me pre-op. Mm-hmm. And then come back post op, and that that's mm-hmm. pretty much the way um, I've gotten a lot of the doctors that that specialize in that oh, to right. function because it just helps the men to understand better where their pelvic floor is, mm-hmm. how to engage it. Because mm-hmm. when you have surgery, there's that disconnect. Number one, with anesthesia, mm-hmm. and number two, they've cut something out, so you've lost mm-hmm. that that connection. Mm-hmm. So just so that they understand and can re re introduce mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. as quickly as their bodies allow okay. um, because gentlemen post prostatectomy I don't want them to be fearful of that um, because it's a, it's a necessary um, mm-hmm. part of an issue they could have but they do have incontinence a lot of incontinence mm-hmm. post prostatectomy but that doesn't mean they're going to have that for the rest of their life okay that is good to know yes, yes there is light at the end of the tunnel there for is them. light at okay. the end of the tunnel all right um Referring to some of the more uh, potentially embarrassing situations that could occur from having a weak pelvic floor, do you have any clothing items or other products that you would recommend for patients um, so that they can go through their daily life with confidence? Um, Yes. A product that I suggest a lot and, again, was actually taught to me from a patient Mm-hmm. is called Poise Impressa. It looks like a tampon. Um, it's for bladder incontinence, but I actually have my prolapse patients use it to support their organs um, for heavy lifting, mm-hmm. for exercise, mm-hmm. for, um, you know, I have so many patients that chop their own wood. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. things, things like that. Okay. Um, so. I have them use it for that. Mm-hmm. It, it is a product that can be inserted um, for 12 hours at a time, which is also amazing because wow. tampons, we know, can't yeah. go in for that mm-hmm. length of time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do, I do suggest that. I know that there's difficulty getting it. A lot of patients can get it on Amazon. Mm-hmm. I have mm-hmm. called every pharmacy in the area, and they no longer carry them. Uh. I guess people weren't use, readily using oh. them, so they don't. Okay. You can k- get them on, like, I know Walmart told me you can get them online on Walmart and have it delivered to the red box or now delivered to your home or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can be a little costly, but that's why I don't have patients use them 24-7, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. only if they're really going to be in need of it. Um, okay. okay. I, I, did, <laughs> I meant to look this up and I forgot, but there is also um, incontinence underwear. Yeah. And I can't think of the name, but mm-hmm. I have a few women that certainly have gotten mm-hmm. those, and they love them okay. because they they don't have to worry about big bulky pads, mm-hmm. you know, or gentlemen mm-hmm. as well. You know, mm-hmm. um, I've never seen them for men, but I'm sure they must have them. I'm mm-hmm. sure they must have them. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, I try to also get my patients away from wearing pads or using pull-ups or things like that as quickly as possible because mm-hmm. you know I always say they call them depends for a reason not that they're dependent because mm-hmm. but because you start depending, depending on, them. on them right and instead okay. of trying to strengthen and resolve the problem mm-hmm. some people can get a little lazy right yeah we all and they that. just reach for their <laughs> depends and, and right. put them on okay right. okay that makes sense all right my another question I have for you is there a point where you would recommend a patient to seek consultation from a surgeon like do you do you ever have a patient that comes in and you're like okay this this needs more more attention than than what we can do here what do you um, a- absolutely okay. um, you know, a lot of patients, what I tell patients is pelvic floor rehab is not conventional, but it's conservative. Mm-hmm. So it's always the best place to start. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not a medication, it's mm-hmm. not invasive, it's not mm-hmm. surgery. Mm-hmm. And if you do need to have surgery, you know, or mm-hmm. I feel that, you know, you need to be seen by somebody for this and you mm-hmm. haven't been, or, um, 
you know, I'm having issues and they're not getting better and I'm starting to realize other avenues that could be a problem with this, mm -hmm. then yes, I'm going to recommend that they see um, a, a surgeon or okay. a urologist or a mm -hmm. gynecologist mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, someone mm -hmm. that can put another set of eyes on things okay. and, and help. And then um, after they've seen that person and, and even had surgery, um, I would assume that they might even come back to you yes. after yes. to strengthen everything. Ag again, mm -hmm. you know, pre-op and post-op is mm -hmm. ideal. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, again, I don't get patients till post-op because they think, oh, you know, I didn't have that issue. Or they, don't, they think, oh, well, I'm going to have surgery, so what's the point? But yeah. if, if they see me pre-op, they go into that operation stronger, healthier, and mm -hmm. will come out with better um, outcomes. Okay. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add that you feel that's important that, that we might have missed? Like I see you, you've got other pieces and parts here um, <laughs> for, your, for your little model. Um, do you want to talk about those or are they I certainly separate? can. Okay. Uh, let me put my organs back in place <laughs> and then okay. I can kind of show you and of course this is a female model mm -hmm. I do have a male model it's just not as good as um, as showing the actual pelvic floor mm -hmm. so I always use my female model even if it's a male I will show him things on my male model but um, mm -hmm. again short of his penis here everything else is the same except mm -hmm. for one other little muscle that's in here but I can explain that Mm -hmm. But I always start with saying to my patients, okay, this is you lopped off on the top and we're looking down in. Mm -hmm. So the first thing, if you were female, the first thing you would see would be your uterus, your mm -hmm. fallopian tubes, and your ovaries. Mm -hmm. This is where you carried a child if you bore children. And you can see how they put pressure on your bladder and your rectum. Mm -hmm. um, and why you can have issues postpartum or years down the line after having children. Okay. Um, and those that have delivered vaginally will have delivered through the cervix mm -hmm. um, and again there mm -hmm. your bladder is in front um, we pee through our urethra which is also here again a male's urethra is their penis women's urethras are tucked in and pelvic floor physical therapists laugh and we always say that we not may not be able to find one but there's always one there <laughs> <laughs> yep yes mm -hmm. so that is there your rectum is in the back it's mm -hmm. the the last part of your large intestines your colon your ascending colon your transverse colon your descending colon becomes your rectum and then we defecate through our anus mm -hmm. Um, so again, you can understand why all these pelvic floor muscles mm -hmm. have an effect on those organs that are in there. Yeah. Because if they're not strong, they're not going to support these things. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to help you um, defecate fully. Or, mm -hmm. you know, those patients that have constipation, and that's a big issue. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, just getting those muscles to be strong enough to help with that. Okay. Um, and, and, you know, of course, there's other things that go along with that as well. Mm -hmm. Fiber and water, yeah. always. Fiber okay. and water is my first mm -hmm. with, with patients that have constipation. Okay. And then, you know, there are supplements mm -hmm. and things like mm -hmm. that. But, you know, you always mm -hmm. start with the basics. Okay. Um, so, again, I did say the pelvic floor is a series of three layers of muscles. It starts at your pubic bone in the front. It goes to your tailbone in the back. Mm -hmm. It is all the red that you see on this model. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty extensive yeah. for such a small area, you would think. Mm -hmm. um, so the first layer is out here, goes around that external anal sphincter. The second layer is harder to see here. It is some of these muscles that are here. And I did say, and I'm not sure that you can zoom in on that, but there is a circular area that's in there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's called compressor urethra. Does what it says. It compresses your urethra to help you hold back urine. Okay. It is specific to women only. Men do not have a compressor urethra. Mm -hmm. um, they have another sphincter that helps to mm -hmm. hold off the urine. Mm -hmm. And then, then it is the third layer mm -hmm. that we um, touched on already. The Kegel layer, the mm -hmm. pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it, technically, it's called the deep layer. So mm -hmm. it's superficial, intermediate, and deep layers are their technical terms. Oh, okay. All right. But 
everybody gives them their own little spin. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I would just mm -hmm. like to say mm -hmm. um, in regards to all of that is that this bladder mm -hmm. loves to be in control and it is an involuntary muscle. The only way we know we need to go mm -hmm. is when this bladder gets full mm -hmm. and it actually has a fill line. Mm -hmm. So if you see that little triangle in there. Oh yeah. Little yeah. triangle in there. Mm -hmm. It's called the trigone. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to that line, it triggers brain and says, brain, it's time for me to go. Oh, okay. But if we do things like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom just cause I'm leaving the house. Mm -hmm. Oh, something woke me up. Ah, I'm up. I might as well just go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. That fill line can change. Oh. And that's when we start going to the bathroom mm -hmm. less than every two to four hours, which is the way we were designed. So two to four hours is normal. Is normal. Okay. 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 And it is normal to not go to the bathroom during the night. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The studies say that unless you're 70 years of age or older, mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to go at night because we were designed for that not to happen. Okay. Um, and if you're 70 or older, it should be once. Mm -hmm. And part mm -hmm. of the reason for that is because every time you get up, you lose an hour of sleep. Right. And that's our replenishing, rejuvenating, mm -hmm. rehydrating mm -hmm. time that our body needs. So mm -hmm. people that get up frequently are very fatigued during the day. So if you have mm -hmm. a lot of fatigue, check how many times you're getting up during the night. Oh, that's a good idea. I did not know that. Yeah. That's great. So yeah. what I like to say is our bladders love to be in control, mm -hmm. so it needs to be mind over bladder. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else that you want to add that we might have missed? Um, I, I think we covered a lot. We got it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. And I would just like to thank you for inviting me here and mm -hmm. doing this. This yes. is quite an honor. Well, we I'm really are really excited. Yes. No, it's, it's our honor. We're thrilled. So thank oh. you so much for taking the time on your day off to, um, <laughs> to come in and, and chat with us about this because it, it definitely is an issue for us at the gym yes. and, and for everyone, but we see it with our members at, at the gym so Excellent. Um, send, so yeah. send those members my way i will um please yeah. have them call me i'm i'm open to any qu calls questions concerns mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and would love to help you the best i can okay now um if they call and you're booked is there someone else there that they could see I do have another therapist that works okay. and does some pelvic floor, but okay. she only does incontinence. Oh, okay. Um, she sees children, which I do not see. So if you have a mm -hmm. child that's having mm -hmm. um, urinary or bowel issues, please feel free to get an order for that child as well. Mm -hmm. um, but again, she only sees incontinence mm -hmm. and she does not see males. So, um, okay. you know, okay. we'd feel, field you into one of the two of us mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we'd get you in as soon as possible okay yes that's wonderful okay well thank you so much leanne this has been fantastic i've i learned a lot that i didn't know so <laughs> <laughs> thank you so and thank you so thank much you. kathy right. and this really has been a pleasure for me great and, and so exciting <laughs> all right well there you have it and it's coach kathy and leanne d'onofrio and we're coming at you from hybrid fitness so as always, small steps, big results. Bye. Bye.